I'm just going to give a few more moments for folks to get into the webinar. All right, I just want to thank you so much for being here, whether you're watching this live or watching this after the fact, getting to know these different institutions is so, so incredibly important in the next step of your life. And these folks here are experts and are here to make your life as easy as possible and figuring out what your next move should be and where you fit best. Uh, really important, our panelists cannot see or hear you. So if you would like to ask a question, please use the Q&A button. It's either at the top or bottom of your screen. You can ask one institution or all of them a question and they will answer you throughout this 45 minutes. Uh, you can find a recording of this available at strivescan.com and there are more sessions happening tomorrow and the next day that you can sign up for as well. And with that, we will kick it off with Grand Canyon University. Thank you. All right. So my name is Joy Stewart. I am the admissions rep here um, for Grand Canyon University. I actually sit in Nashville, Tennessee, so I am local. Um, GCU, we are a private Christian university. We pride ourselves on being affordable. Um, we haven't raised our tuition in going on 13 years, so that's very exciting for us. Um, we have about 200 plus academic programs with about 23,000 students on campus. Um, one of the really fun highlights about GCU is that we are NCAA D1. Um, by far, basketball is our most popular program or a sport rather. And uh, we did make it to the big dance this year. So that was very exciting. Um, YGCU, um, we pride ourselves on having hands-on learning opportunities for students. Um, we are a teaching university. So students really get that um, chance to really get that one-on-one -on -one, um, time with their professors. Um, so tons of faculty involvement. Um, we really wanna empower our students. Um, GCU students are creative. We want you to be creative. Um, we want you to really uh, be able to find whatever your purpose is. Um, and we have all the resources on campus for you to be able to do so. Um, with us being a private Christian university, um, spiritual life is also very important. Um, however, students aren't required to be Christian. They're not required to sign a proclamation of faith, um, but we want you to be able to explore that as well while you're in school. Um, a lot of our students are also graduating early in some um, capacities, oftentimes in three, um, three to three and a half years. So uh, that's also very exciting for us and for Tennessee students particularly, it's exciting that we don't have out-of-state tuition. Um, so it makes us quite comparable to um, oftentimes the schools here in state locally um, and we have a free application. So there's no essay, it takes about 20 minutes to complete. I would say it's probably one of the easiest college applications you'll do, um, but those are some of the, the highlights about GCU. Um, as far as academics go, we have eight colleges as well as our honors college. Um, so we have programs ranging from engineering, medical studies, business, um, criminal justice, fine arts, psychology, um, and many, many more. Um, our honors college um, is one that I always like to highlight specifically because it's no extra cost. So you don't have to pay to be in our honors college. We want to um, reward you for all the hard work you've done thus far. Um, so as far as honors college um, eligibility, students with a 3.9 GPA weighted in high school, uh, weighted or unweighted, get an automatic um, acceptance into our honors college and students with 3.7s and up can apply to be in our honors college. Um, but some of those key highlights is that there's exclusive fac uh, faculty mentoring, research opportunities, tons of professional development, um, in international excursions. So we have mission trips, um, study abroad opportunities, and our distinguished lecture series um, that students get uh, priority tickets to as well. Um, as far as the campus experience is like none other, um, GCU camp GCU's campus is um, amazing. So we have multiple pools on campus. Um, we have um, both dorms and apartments. Freshmen are able to live in our, the apartments their first year of school. Um, we have about 30 plus eateries, two of them being Chick-fil-A. So everybody loves Chick-fil-A. Um, and then we have tons of campus events all the time. There's always something to do. Um, even in this crazy world of COVID, we've tried to keep students as um, involved as possible. Um, so definitely tons of opportunity to just be involved on campus um, and really get the most out of your college experience. 
Um, going back to NCAA, so as I mentioned, we are NCAA D1. We have both men and women's basketball, men and women's soccer, softball, volleyball, um, so tons and tons of sports. Um, but also we have our club sports options as well. So um, for students that may not be D1 athletes, but you still want to participate and play, we have club sports, um, which are um, extremely competitive. So if you are still a student that wants to compete, but again, not at that D D1 level, um, club sports is a great option. And we also have intramurals as well. So GCU is a very active campus. Um, we're not too far from just about anything. About four hours away is California. I mean, you go to Sedona to go hiking. So GCU students are very, very active. Um, and we stay, stay that way on campus. And I love that about GCU. Um, as far as kind of cost and what that looks like, average cost is going to be somewhere around twenty-five dollars to $26,000 per year with um, tuition, again, um, being that $16,500. Um, and then when you look at our scholarship opportunities, um, we have tons of scholarships and we want students to be able to, um, again, make school affordable. So this is our scholarship chart. Um, and so we are either or. So that's a really cool, another cool thing about GCU is that um, whatever is gonna give you the best scholarship is what we're gonna go with. So if you have a 3.0, but you got a 27 on your ACT, guess what? You're gonna get a better scholarship because of that. Um, and that's just something that um, is a, uh, makes you able to really make school even more affordable um, with that either or kind of option. Um, again, it's super easy to apply. Our application is free. It's mobile friendly. Um, as far as admission requirements, um, a 3.0 GPA um, unweighted is required or a 2.5 with a 19 ACT or 1000 SAT. Um, other than that, we do have other options. So if you don't quite meet those um, admissions requirements, we can sit down and talk and look at another option that would allow you to still attend GCU. Um, now, my favorite thing about campus is our campus visit options. Um, one of our most um, exciting is our Discover GCU trip. This is a free overnight trip for you as a student to come check on, uh, check out GCU, try it on for yourself for about a little over 24 hours. Um, we pay for your flight out there, so that's a free flight for you. We're going to pay for your lunch and your dinner, um, depending on how long you're on campus potentially breakfast the next morning, um, but you really get to see what GCU is all about. Um, I can talk to you and tell you how great it is, but you won't understand it until you see it. Um, so our GCU, Discover GCU is by far my favorite part of being an admissions representative here, um, but we also have other options as well to get you there on campus. Um, and this is my contact information. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you. Thank you. If you put that in the chat, that's awesome. Sure. Uh, next up, we have Western Colorado University. Thank you so much. And thank you, everyone that's joining us live tonight. And for those that are watching the recording, it's an honor to be here with you today. My name is Lindsay, and I am a Regional Director of Recruitment for Western Colorado University in Gunnison, Colorado. What you're seeing here on your screen is a picture of campus. It's really, really beautiful year round. It's certainly not this green this time of year. There's quite a bit of snow on the ground right now, but it's really lovely regardless. And the thing that I loved most about Western when I was a student at Western was the fact that campus is really small and tight knit. It's very easy to walk from one end of campus to the other. You always run into somebody you know, so it uh, kind of feels like a family and a home away from home. Uh, another thing that I really liked about Western is that our backyard is nature's best classroom. So specifically for students that are interested in STEM related fields, uh, you'll definitely get a whole lot of hands on research opportunities as early as your freshman year. You don't have to wait until you're a junior or senior to get involved in those opportunities. Um, I took a wildlife biology class my freshman year and I'm not a biology major, uh, but in one of our classes, our professor took us fly fishing for a few for a few hours of the day, which was super fun and just a really great way to get some immersive, um, real hands-on experience. Even if you're not necessarily interested in STEM, all of our programs offer really hands-on learning. We do offer over a hundred programs, majors and areas of study. So lots of things for you to choose. Another great thing about Western is that our average class size is 17 students. This means that all of your classes will be really small. We don't have a single lecture hall on campus, so you will never sit in a classroom larger than 50 students. Um, you can compare that to a, a larger university where you might be sitting in a lecture hall with a few hundred students. Your 
freshman and sophomore year and you won't have that opportunity at Western. So just to kind of paint a picture of how it could potentially be different there. And then as far as affordability goes, Western is a relatively affordable four-year institution for in-state and out-of-state students. Our out-of-state tuition is $18,600 per year, but we do have really competitive financial aid award packages for students. 80% of students on Western's campus receive financial aid in the forms of grants or scholarships, which is money that does not have to be paid back. Um, so that's a, a really great statistic for us. Uh, but our automatic merit scholarship is between $8,000 per year and $10,000 per year. So for you as a student, if you come into Western with at least a 3.35 GPA, you will automatically receive $8,000 per year to attend Western and that can go all the way up to $10,000 per year. There are other scholarships that stack on top of that. So you can apply for our common scholarship, which will apply you to over 40 different scholarships on our website. And then every single academic program also has program-based scholarships. But 100% of students that apply to Western are automatically considered for that merit scholarship. So you don't have to do anything else um, as far as apply for that scholarship. If you qualify for it, you just automatically get it. And then as far as services that we offer to students, this is certainly not a comprehensive list, just some things that I like to highlight. We have an academic resource center that houses our disability services, academic advising, um, career services, houses study abroad, office of the registrar. So a lot of different resources within this specific office. Um, but one of the things that I like to mention is that every single freshman and sophomore are paired with an academic advisor for their um, transition onto campus. So it, you will automatically have an academic advisor that's helping you get registered for your first semester of courses. Once you declare a major, which you don't have to do right away, you've got all the way until the end of your sophomore year to declare a major. But once you do declare a major, you get to choose an academic advisor that's a professor within your academic major. And you'll meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, two to three times a semester, and they'll kind of be in your corner for a really long time. We also have career services, and this is if you'd like a work-study job, an internship, or a career after you graduate, our career services office will help with any um, job option for you. They'll help you narrow down your options. They'll help with mock interviews. They can do resume reviews, cover letter reviews. So just to make sure that you're totally ready to go for a job interview or a job application that you have coming up. We also have a math tutoring center and a writing center. So any student can go into the math tutoring center at any point, whether you've got questions on your math homework or you want help studying for a test, you can do that. And that's um, totally free of charge for you. Uh, same thing with the writing center. You can take a paper that you've already written, take it into the writing center and have somebody edit it for you. We also have our epic mentorship program. So every single freshman and transfer student that comes to Western is paired with an epic mentor. And these are current students who are sophomores through seniors. So they've experienced um, quite a bit on campus. They're really involved. They're kind of just a really great peer resource for you. They can answer any questions that you have about your transition onto campus. And then they're also a really great resource if you have any questions once you get to campus as well. And um, they're also kind of a friendly face. They could just text you and say, hey, I'm headed to a volleyball game if you wanna join, or hey, I'm studying at Mocha's, which is a local coffee shop in town if you wanna come with. So they're just kind of there to, to be a friend once you get to campus as well. If you're interested in visiting campus, we would absolutely love to have you. We are open for in-person campus tours right now. Um, we also have a virtual tour option if you're not able to visit. So you can find either of those options at western.edu forward slash visit. And we also have some recruitment events coming up, which are webinar series much like this, where you can interact with current students and professors and different clubs and organizations on campus. And you can find those at western.edu forward slash recruitment events. If you're interested in applying, you can go to western.edu forward slash apply and you can use the code GOWESTERN2021 to waive your $30 application fee. And that is everything that I have for you. Here's my contact information. I will drop that in the chat. Thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate it. All right, thank you. Next up, we have University of Colorado Boulder.
Excellent. Thank you very much. And hello, everyone. Um, keeping you in the beautiful state of Colorado and just going to the other side of the mountains here to the front range. Uh, my name is Brad Klo, and I'm the Senior Assistant Director of Admissions for the University of Colorado Boulder, but I am based here in Nashville, working with all the students in the southeast of the US. So I'll be your contact. But just here on the screen, a great glimpse of our campus. We are a larger institution. We have about 35,000 total students. About 29,000 of those are going to be undergraduates. Um, and about 42% of those students come from outside of the state of Colorado. So you're going to be experiencing a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds, a lot of diverse areas um, all across the world. Um, and obviously at all 50 states, um, um, in the US. Um, great glimpse too that everything with the red roof there that you see is our campus. So it gives you an idea of the layout of our campus. Um, still pretty condensed that you can make anywhere uh, on campus within 15 minutes. So easily can get between your classes. And then everything that surrounds our campus is the city of Boulder, which we're very happy to be a part of that community. And our students really are uh, strong members of that community. And the community has an active role in our university as well. Even though we are a larger institution, you'll see that we still have that 18 to 1 student to faculty ratio. So we're still encouraging you to really have those relationships with your professors, with your faculty members, to engage with your fellow students in your classes as well um, throughout your career and even across different disciplines. Um, we have eight colleges, schools, and programs that I'll talk about in just a second, over 100 different majors that students can study within, and many more minors and certificate programs as well. And of course, a lot of activities for our students to take part in, whether that's all the outstanding outdoor activities that Colorado has to offer, over 500 clubs and organizations or maybe cheering on your uh, Buffaloes in any of our Division I athletic programs. We do compete in the Pac-12 Conference. Uh, you see our football stadium there right in the center. Even if you aren't a big sports fan, great thing to go on a Saturday and go to a football game and see one of the greatest spectacles in college sports. And that's the running of Ralphie. She is our live American Buffalo mascot that makes a loop around the football field at the beginning of each game and at halftime. We're also really proud, obviously, of what our students do in the classroom and outside, and it's why we've been named one of the top 25 colleges for students who want to change the world, whether that's through civic engagement, volunteer engagement, the research that they're doing in all areas of study, they're really making that, that impact on um, the future of our world. And obviously the city of Boulder too, recognizes one of the number one college towns in America and one of the best places in the US to live by US News and World Report. And you're just 30 miles away north of Denver, one of the best places in America to live as well. So you have the best of both world, a, a college town and a larger city at your disposal. So our students, again, had the opportunity to study over 100 different majors in these seven different colleges that you can graduate from. I mentioned an eighth program that I'll talk about in one second, but our College of Arts and Sciences are certainly our largest college on campus. About 65% of our students have a major in the College of Arts and Sciences. Think social sciences, natural sciences, the humanities, some of our fine arts programs. Um, if you're thinking pre-med, pre-law, any of those programs where you'll go on for a professional degree, typically our students have a major in the College of Arts and Sciences. Our College of Engineering and Applied Science and our Lead School of Business both are ranked top 20 nationally in their respective fields, a lot of great hands-on engagement. And even though those are our three largest colleges at the top, that doesn't diminish the work that's done in the bottom four there. Um, in our School of Education, our College of Media Communication Information, our College of Music, and our Program in Environmental Design, again, emphasizing that hands-on experiences, interactions with your faculty, interactions across all these curriculums, um, whether you're a business student working with other engineering students at our now combined engineering center and business building, the opportunities really are endless. And if you're undecided and not sure what you want to study, you can apply to our program in exploratory studies. That's that eighth program that's on there. And those advisors are going to help you find your path into one of these seven colleges, schools, and programs to find the career that's going to be the best fit for you. First year students do live on campus. There you see one of our, our tallest residence hall and the tallest building in Boulder. And it will be the tallest building in Boulder for the foreseeable future because of limitations on the size of buildings to keep the opportunity for people to see the beautiful backdrop, the flat irons there. Um, so first year students do live on campus, whether that's a traditional residence hall experience or residential academic programs being fully immersed in your academic discipline or living in learning communities, living with other people with, with the same social based interest. 
obviously take advantage of everything that Colorado has to offer. You're seeing the flat irons there. It's not a bad way to wake up with over 300 plus days of sunshine. Our students certainly take advantage of that, but it's not just all outdoor activities. Maybe it's going to be in the marching band or watching a concert there on Farron Field right in the center of campus. Maybe it's playing pickup basketball or a club sport or skating on the ice rink in our rec center. Maybe you want to go hiking in Chautauqua Park, which is right there at the foothills of the flat irons. So you can head up in any of the medium to more difficult or easy trails as well. Lots of biking and of course skiing. A lot of people head to Colorado to ski and snowboard. Great access to some of the best ski resorts in the country. Or if you want a quick run in on the afternoon, Eldora is our closest mountain, just 40 minutes from campus, but lots of theater activities, musical activities, food in terms of not just on campus, but in the city of Boulder as well. Really, uh, it's you can find almost anything that you'd like to do on our campus and in the surrounding area. Students also take the advantage of study abroad. Uh, when the world opens up to us again post COVID, we have over 400 different programs in 65 different countries. Again, students really giving back through volunteer organizations, civic engagement, or in research. So we are a tier one research institution. We are one of uh, 65 AAU designated institutions in the country. Our undergraduate research opportunities program connecting students to those undergraduate research uh, endeavors that they want to pursue with faculty and staff. If you're interested in applying to CU Boulder, just an idea about the deadlines that you're going to look at, early action or regular decision, really no difference. Both are non-binding. You just get a an answer earlier if you apply early action. Pay attention to those dates. Um, when the application does open, uh, the Common App on August 1st, those dates might look a little bit earlier. So just pay attention to that if you are applying to CU Boulder. But again, we do utilize the Common App. So if you're applying to multiple institutions through the Common App, you can utilize CU Boulder and apply that way as well. While we aren't able to offer in-person tours right now, we have a lot of virtual visit opportunities um, that you will have be updated every Monday at noon on our website. Live interactive virtual tours, sitting on a, a class, a sample lecture, one-on-one uh, -on -one appointments with our student ambassadors, meet your actual admissions counselor, lots of great ways to engage until we can open up for tours again. And finally, my contact information again, as your admissions counselor for CU Boulder for the state of Tennessee, feel free to reach out with any questions or put them in the Q&A for the rest of the session. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Next up, we have the University of Arizona. Okay, hello everyone. My name is Molly Ingram. I use she, her pronouns, and I am Assistant Director of Admission on the West Coast for the University of Arizona. We are located in Tucson, which is about 100 miles south of Phoenix, and Tucson is Arizona's second largest city. Here you can see our beautiful one square mile. Not only are we Arizona's oldest university, founded before Arizona was even officially a state, but we are also considered Arizona's only best buy university. So we are considered to provide a very great quality education for the cost. Back when we first opened in 1885, our very first graduating class only had three students. Um, and that building in the bottom right hand side corner of the slide, that was the only building on campus. But since then, you can see that our campus has grown significantly. Full red brick buildings are part of our campus. And we do have close to 35,000 plus undergraduate students. If you factor in our grad students, we have over 45,000 students. Uh, not only do we have 100 plus undergraduate degree programs, but we also have a law school, a medical school, and Arizona's first public university to have a veterinary school. Here you can see just a very short list of some of our more popular programs at Arizona, such as architecture, engineering, which we have 15 different kinds of, nursing, business, and our College of Fine Arts, which includes programs like musical theater, dance, which we rank second in the country. Uh, so lots of different things for you to pursue at the University of Arizona. We do get students from all 50 states, as well as 120 different countries, and 48% of our students identify as being ethnic diverse. In terms of the University of Arizona, like CU Boulder and Brad mentioned the Association of American Universities, we are also a member of the AAU. We are very proud to be one of those 65 universities in North America that is at the very top level of research activity. Um, in terms of the research that the University of Arizona has, we have a partnership with NASA, the UA slash NASA Space Grant 
program. We have students and faculty who are working on collecting samples from a near-Earth asteroid, Bennu, um, and that NASA project is called OSIRIS-REx. So lots of really cool things to do at the University of Arizona. You'll also notice at the very bottom of this list that we do have an honors college. Anything at the University of Arizona can be studied at the honors level, and more than half of our honors college students do go on to grad school, law school, med school of some sort. In fact, we do have an early assurance program with our honors college straight into our medical school called the MedCats Early Assurance Program. Now, aside from having wonderful research as a tier one research institution and having over 100 different undergraduate degrees for you to choose from, we want to make sure that our students are having fun. We have over 600 clubs and organizations for you to get involved in, uh, whether you're interested in joining a fraternity or sorority or one of our clubs that could be related to academic interests, cultural, political you name it. We are also home to the nation's largest student-run carnival, Spring Fling, and that is something that we have been putting on for over 40 years. Like my colleague Brad, the University of Arizona is also a member of the Pac-12, uh, so we are a Division I school for sports, so if you want to see us take on CU Boulder, Stanford, UCLA, Berkeley, all those other Pac-12 schools, the University of Arizona has a lot of school spirit. We also really care about providing centers for our students um, where they can meet at cultural resource centers. So here you can kind of see where some of those are on our campus. Um, we do also have a wonderful LGBTQ resource center. We are one of only 168 universities in the country that employ full-time staff members at our center. Now, if you've never been to Tucson before, Tucson is a really great place to go to college. It is a self-described sunny, laid-back college town. Not only are we Arizona's second largest city with 300 plus days of sunshine, but we have a really fun downtown area and we are home to the nation's best 23 miles of Mexican food. So if you love Mexican food, you should definitely come visit and try our wonderful restaurants. In fact, the head chef of Boca, which is located in downtown Tucson, which you can see right here, she is currently on Top Chef. Um, so definitely watch the current season Chef to see what kind of food you could be eating in Tucson. This downtown area, it's really not too far away from campus. You can take the streetcar or you can walk or bike. Now let's talk about our application. If there are any seniors listening, we are still accepting applications for fall 2021 admission. If you are a junior, our application is actually opening a month early this year, and you can find us on the Common App, the Coalition, or simply on our website, and our application will open on July 1st. We use a holistic review. We are going to look at these classes, so the rigor of classes you've taken, your grades in these courses, and your overall grade trend, and we do not require any test scores for merit or admission, nor do we require you to write an essay or get a letter of recommendation. You can expect to receive an admissions decision in two to four weeks, and you can be assured admission if you meet this criteria. So some of you, you might already be admitted to the University of Arizona and not even know it, so we would love to see your application. We do have scholarships specifically for out-of-state students. These are the scholarship amounts right here, and it is based on the unweighted GPA. These are are renewable for four years. Thank you so much for listening. I will put my information into the chat as well as some other ways that you can interact with the University of Arizona virtually. Thank you. All right, thank you. Next up we have St. John's College. And let's see. All right, can you see my screen? I do not. Now I do. Okay. Excellent. St. John's College. Uh, my name is Randall Hollinsby. I'm the Associate Director of Admissions at St. John's College and the Director of International Recruitment. Uh, St. John's College is one college with two campuses. We are in Annapolis, Maryland, and have been since 1696. We're the third oldest college uh, in the United States. We are also located in Santa Fe, New Mexico, at the southern tip of the Rockies. We didn't get there till 1964, but Santa Fe has been there since around 1500. 
Uh, the college is best known uh, for our great books program. It's the only program we have uh, and the only major we have. We are liberal arts majors. We have an all required curriculum. All of our classes are discussion classes. We don't use any textbooks. We only study primary sources. Uh, there are no lectures on campus. If you are looking for a small college experience, St. John's is probably perfect for you. Uh, each of our campuses only takes 450 undergrads each year. Our average class size is 10, and we have a seven to one student to teacher ratio. We are roughly 50-50 male-female. 20% uh, of our students are international and another 20% identify as students of color. In 2019, thanks to generous donations from our alumni, we cut our tuition from 52,000 to 35,000. On top of that, we offer merit scholarships and generous financial aid. What do students do with our unusual education? 20% uh, will go into uh, education. Um, a lot at the college level, 20% into business, 40% uh, go into a wide range of careers. I went to St. John's uh, and then on to work at the National Gallery and uh, became an architect. We send about 10% of our graduates into law and nearly that many into medicine every year. Uh, this is about 20 times the national average. In fact, over the last five years, everyone who applied to law school from St. John's College uh, was accepted. Uh, the medicine acceptance rate is about the same. I encourage you to read about us, not just listen to me. Uh, at the Princeton Review, the US News and World Report, and Forbes.com. Any place else uh, you can find uh, information about us, yeah, go ahead and trust them too. We are proud members of the Colleges That Change Lives group. And uh, it's not all about education at St. John's. Um, we also enjoy individual sports like fencing, uh, crew and sailing, uh, rock climbing, hiking, cycling, chess and go, uh, archery and martial arts, and video and board games. And of course, uh, we continue our dominance of collegiate croquet. We are on the Common App and Coalition App. We have no application fee. We are still taking applications for fall 2021. Um, we have been test optional for 40 years and we are uh, first gen friendly. Here's my contact information uh, and I uh, thank you for your time. All right, thank you very much. Uh, next up we have University of Denver. All right, thank you so much. And thank you for uh, coming here and uh, taking time out of your night to uh, just join us here today. I Hopefully you can see my screen, we're good? Yes. All right, cool. All right, the University of Denver. Uh, it's um, probably one of my uh, favorite pictures of, Cam actually no, the, my favorite picture's coming up, but I'll, I'll show you later. But then, uh, yes, we're the University of Denver. Um, we're a medium-sized institution, uh, but we do have, um, uh, 22 students as an average for our class size, and then we do have a 12 to 1 uh, student to faculty ratio, weight ratio, and the 99.9% .9 of our uh, classes are taught by professors. Uh, this is a look into our numbers here. Uh, we do have a total of uh, five, about 5,000 uh, undergraduate uh, students and 7,000 uh, graduate students, but um, a lot of the campus and everything is really focused on our, on our undergraduate students and uh, the graduate population is usually coming in uh, during the night uh, for night classes and things like that. So uh, there's not going to be a lot of overlap there. 
but de but definitely you could uh, talk to any of the grad students as well and uh, be um, connected to them in that sense. Uh, we do have five academic divisions. We have a College of Arts and Humanities, Social Science, uh, International Studies, uh, College of Business, uh, Natural Sciences and Mathematics, uh, and uh, School of uh, Engineering and Computer Science. So just a lot of things, um, a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, academics that you could uh, pursue here. We do have more than 100 uh, majors and then you could definitely major, double major, double minor. And uh, we do have um, more of a liberal arts, um, uh, liberal arts ap approach to our um, academics. And here's um, something that is a little different from us. Uh, for us, we do, we are on the quarter system. So you're gonna be, you're gonna split the year into three quarters or three, four quarters, the fall, winter, spring, and summer. But the summer is optional and it's not part of the tuition. So it's just the fall, winter, and spring for you. And then if you look at the bottom of the screen, it's gonna say six weeks of winter break. That's not a typo. You get six weeks of a great winter break. You could uh, take advantage of the mountains. You could take advantage of uh, Denver as and the city, or you could uh, just take that time to go back home and rest and just enjoy family time. So the possibilities are endless. And uh, a lot of our students do internships as well during that time. So a great, a great time to, a great schedule to just get all your classes in and to uh, just be really flexible and um, making the maximum, um, uh, the maximum effort to be able to uh, succeed in your academics. And then, so speak of academics, we do have 71% of uh, students uh, that are academic, um, but then they do also uh, have internships. And we do have 80, I think 80% of our students are, um, have uh, more than one internship. So uh, internships are really um, a great opportunity here at DU and DU's uh, just kind of like in that Goldilocks spot. We're not too far away from Denver, only a 15 minute light rail ride or a, a 15 minute drive or uh, one hour away from the mountains. So we, it's like a, right in the middle where you get the best of both worlds. You could uh, enjoy the city and then you can enjoy the outdoors that Colorado has to offer. And uh, yes, this is the, this is my favorite picture of campus. Very beautiful aerial view. You can see uh, where DU is with the uh, high tops that kind of looks like, um, that looks like Hogwarts uh, school with the, the pointy golden tops and blue tops. And uh, you can see Denver out in the distance and then the mountains not too far from there uh, as well. So very, very beautiful. 300 days of annual sunshine as my um, Colorado um, colleagues will uh, attest to. It's a very beautiful state, love it here. Um, this is a look at um, students that are coming from all around the country and all around the globe. Uh, so uh, this, these are some of the numbers here uh, that you can see. So it's not just going to be students just from Colorado that are coming to DU. There's going to be, you're going to have opportunities to meet uh, a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds and really just broaden your horizons in that way. And like I said, location, location, location. These are really just great things to just really explore and to experience here in Colorado. You know, you have the city life. The music scene is just really popping and you know you have the food scene is really coming up too and you know if you're like me i like to go to the slopes and uh just really uh just enjoy the mountains and the, the many uh, ski resorts and snowboard resorts that uh that colorado has to offer and then as as well as the summertime just great times to hike kayak and uh just do whatever else uh that's uh naturey and fun so really the best of both worlds uh, that we have here at the University of Denver. Uh, over 77% of our students study abroad and um, 200 um, undergrad, undergraduates participate in research every year. And then we do have a whole field that is just um, dedicated to the undergraduate research uh, students. So uh, no grad students are gonna be like uh, going in and um, just taking over the research for you. And then 90% of our graduates are employed or enrolled in grad school in um, six months after graduation. And DU is ranked number three in the nation for the percent of students who go abroad. The number of program sites DU uh, partners with is about 150 uh, program sites all around the world. So you can definitely go anywhere you want. Uh, the, uh, the number of countries that represented in the Sharrington Global Scholars, which is a great opportunity for our juniors and seniors that are um, going to study abroad that fall. Uh, if you have a 3.0 or, or better, uh, at DU, then you will be able to go to anywhere where we will pay for your ticket, pay for your passport, uh, pay for a whole round trip, and just uh, you get to go to wherever you want to study. 
uh, all around the globe. And uh, it's going to be the same cost as uh, you studying at DU. We are, uh, we do have um, 18 division one sports. We do have a bunch of club sports and intramural sports and opportunities like that uh, as well. Um, more than 100 student organizations and clubs. And if there's nothing that um, is here for you at DU, you could definitely start that. And that's something that uh, we really take pride in in our students, um, just really starting a lot of clubs and uh, just being really involved. And obviously a great, great uh, campus traditions in the spring and the uh, winter as well. Uh, this is just uh, a look at the kinds of students that we are um, uh, accepting into our university. You can see the uh, middle 50% and we have uh, the GPA is 3.6 uh, to 4.0, SATs. Uh, those are the a SAT scores and the ACT scores as well. Um, this is what we have for our application. Uh, we just require an application, an essay. We have a $65 application fee. And um, we do have um, need the official transcripts and the council recommendation. And we, do, we are uh, test optional. I think this is our third year going test optional. So uh, you could definitely use that as an option if you uh, uh, not too comfortable sending in your scores, or if you'd rather not do that, that's fine. We look at you the same as uh, if uh, as a student that uh, has um, uh, has submitted test test scores, so nothing to worry about there. And then uh, this is uh, a look at the costs uh, and uh, the total that we have here at the University of Denver is, uh, round goes um, a little bit over uh, sixty. Uh, 8,000 there, and we do have 81% um, of our students, um, anyway, 81 percent of our students uh, have funds or scholarships or grants, and 80% um, of our students do receive our merit scholarships that you can see uh, the values here, and uh, we do um, try our best to uh, make uh, the best decisions in um, helping out our students uh, financially as much as we can. And uh, here is my uh, contact information. I Thank you so much for listening to uh, this presentation. And uh, yeah, I'll definitely um, drop that in the, in the chat. So uh, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, if everyone could hop back on uh, in the same order that you presented, if you could answer, what is one piece of advice you would give folks going through the college search process, uh, starting with Grand Canyon University? Um, I would say my one piece of advice is to look everywhere. Um, sometimes you get really kind of caught up in what you're used to or what you know or what's close. Don't be afraid. Um, about 60% of GC students are from out of state. So um, that's a lot of students that aren't afraid. Um, so I would definitely say look everywhere, ask all the questions, um, but don't be afraid. I would say my piece of advice for students in their college search process is to be is to go and visit campuses. The best way to see if a school is a good fit for you is to actually set foot on that campus and get to know the students and faculty members and um, interact as much as possible. Uh, mine would be to use the resources that you have at your disposal to learn about the colleges and universities you might be interested in, whether that's your college counselor, guidance counselor at your high school, or the folks like us that work at each of those institutions. Uh, we are there to help guide you and even refer you to places um, in case you can't find the answers. So certainly use those resources. I would recommend uh, try not to get caught up in the brand name of universities. There are literally thousands of universities in the United States and they all can offer you something special. Um, so really try to focus on what is going to be a good fit for you, not just academically, but socially, financially, um, location wise. And you might be surprised there's going to be far more colleges out there that could be an amazing fit for you than you realize. So I guess my best advice is I would start dreaming about what you're going to do after college. Um, college is not your vacation from high school. It's, it's the rehearsal for the rest of your life. And you don't have to have a plan uh, next year that guides you for the rest of your life. But you ought to start thinking about it, even if you don't tell anyone. All right, yeah, that's uh, everyone said so many great things. I kind of kind of sucks that I'm last, but um, I'll try my best. Um, I, I would say to just be open about anything. Uh, like a lot of my colleagues here said, there's so many, so many, so many great institutions all around the world. So all are all around the country and all around the world as well. You know, there's uh, so many uh, great ways for you to 
anywhere you choose, you're going to be able to uh, grow as a person and just really experience uh, life. So just really just be open to everything. Don't be closed minded and uh, just see what's out there. All right. Wonderful advice. And uh, just a reminder to anyone watching this that these folks are the experts about these institutions. So definitely reach out to them. That is their job. That is what they're best at. And, and again, they're there to help you. Thank you for being here. Uh, when you exit, there's going to be a four question survey. You can find a recording of this and everything put in the chat uh, at StriveScan's website. So you can hop there. You can also sign up for more sessions at StriveScan as well. Good luck to everyone uh, looking for their next steps. And thank you so much to the panelists and have a good night.